from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, welcome everybody. I'm Mike Morielli. That's Rob Hitchcock, and welcome back to another episode of the Tie Cats Audio Network. Oh, it's not the Tie Cats. It's the Morielli and Hitch podcast on oh, the Tie see? Cats Audio Network. We, we, hey, we have to plug the Cats too, though, because <laughs> they hired us. <laughs> That's right. I just got mad at you for for uh, screwing up on a promo, and I just screwed up the intro. But anyway, yeah. Robbie, uh, it's yeah. good to see you. Buddy. We talked yesterday a little bit, yeah, which is five rare. Minutes. Which is yeah. rare. Actually, it was Dave and, talking to us. We didn't really talk. And just to make it clear to the, to everyone that's listening, uh, we didn't we didn't go over anything. Oh no! no. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I see so that, uh, for those for well, for those of you who can't see, uh, you're outside again. The wind's blowing and the birds are, are cool. chirping in the background. But it uh, looks like a beautiful day in Grimsby. It's a beautiful day in Grimsby, buddy, and uh, lots of good things happen. Uh, maybe not so much for the Cats at this point in time. They're yeah. still struggling to get their first win. Um, they do have a good opportunity in the next few weeks to, to make that happen against the East. But, uh, you know, what's your take so far at the start of the season, Rob? Well, I think I mentioned it yesterday. They're one game away from first place. <laughs> yes, yes. Being being 0-4. Uh you know, I'm glad that we didn't talk last week because I already forgot the game from two weeks ago. But, um, you know what, it was, again, it seems like the same theme every single week. Guys are finding a way to lose, but they just, they got beat. And, you know, they're again, they're not that far away. I keep bringing back, I think it was the 97 season when we were 2-16 and 16 or 1-17. and 17. I'm not quite sure what we were in 97, but remember we were losing games by three oh, points. Yeah. We were yep. losing by... One by six. I think it was a total of eight or nine games we lost by twenty-one points. And yep. they're again no panic. They're a lot yet, better but, than we were, and they were a lot better now than we were oh, back then, for sure. For, and we had some players too, yeah. like you know, on our team. Remember that team? We had some really good players. But I have a, I have a feeling that it's the, because the East is is playing like everyone's playing like garbage right now. You're right. They've got they've got like Montreal, Toronto, Montreal. They've got a bunch of. Uh, East games, and they've just got to win those ones, and you know, then you're in the playoffs. So there's still lots of games to go. How about you? Lots of games to go. I, you know, I just again, I think they're just under underperforming at the key times, right? If good teams win when they have a lead, they build on that lead. They don't let leads get away from them. So they've 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 certainly had that to to work on, and they've had the bye week. And, and you you and I know the bye weeks are great when you come off a win. When you come yeah. off a loss, oh, that's that week, long. That's it's a long. long week. You know that's why? Because week. remember that? Because when we lost going into a bye, you feel like you have to go in and watch film. Yeah. You have to go in. And so you want to take a few days with your family because that's what a bye is about. It's not about taking the whole week off. No. You work out and you do your stuff. But guys are probably on each other. The vets are probably saying, get in here every day. Let's watch some film. Let's Because that's the panic button. But it's yeah. not. But I do tell you on the offense, I think, you know, I'm going to get on Dane a little bit. You know, I think he's got eight picks and five fumbles, just him. Yeah. Um, that's that's tough in four games. That's yeah, you tough. can't turn yeah. the ball over and win. You just can't. You no, can't and, and I'm not blaming everything on him. I mean, it's a team game. It's offense game. I mean, the offensive line at, at the beginning wasn't playing all that well, and they're playing some really good defenses. I mean, Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, they all had, everyone's got some great defenses, but when you're going up against some of the, some of the best, uh, you know, they held their own, but you just can't turn the ball over. Can't no. do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. And let's turn the page. Well, not really turn the page. Let's talk briefly about finally the CFL stepped up and handed that, that idiot in uh, Saskatchewan a four game suspension. Do you think I it's think enough? It's, I don't. Well, I've seen I've seen some worse hits and getting two games, but I, I think I think the way that it happened and he you know it, it led up to that hit because he went he did go low even though he got yeah. blocked he did go low right at his legs, which pissed me off. And I, I said to this the other day to you, I think he was walking off the field, flexing yeah. in Saskatchewan, flexing to the yeah. fans. And there's a couple in there that were cheering, but I, the majority of the fans weren't doing anything, which I applaud Saskatchewan fans for doing that. But when you got a guy walking by your bench, they're his own bench, and he's doing this and flexing, that guy needs to go. He needs to go. Like, and your own team league. doesn't stop him? If, if no. We saw, if back in our day. If one of our guys just heard a player and was walking off in either wind, flexing in front of our bench, he'd get a beating. He'd get a beating. 
Maybe maybe something was said. We don't know. Maybe something yeah. was said to him in the in the in the change room, which I think some of the veteran guys would have probably said I something hope. to him. But I hear that's a that was an ongoing. He did that. He used to do that in university as well. Yeah. From from what I heard. So you know what? He's got a hot head. There's no there's no room for that in our game. Um, I I say get rid of him, especially Mazzoli. He's out what ten twelve. I don't know how long he's out, but they say he 10, could be out weeks. for. Yeah, well, see, right there, he should be he should be gone. I don't care any type of hit like that. That's I agree. I think he's got to be gone because he for the la- up until yesterday, and even including, I guess, today and yesterday, the, all the talk about the CFL has been about this stupid guy. So yeah. never mind all the touchdowns that are being scored and the catches yeah. that are being made. They're talking about this guy. So yeah. this that's a that's a black mark. Like I, I he's he's got to go in, in my opinion. Now. Yeah. I understand the dynamics of the players' association very well firsthand that they're going to challenge this because they got to represent this guy's a dues paying member. But Jeremiah Mazzoli is a dues paying member too, yeah. and he is your he is a starting quarterback in this league. And I think I think you'll agree with me. And this is no slight on anybody, but there are only certain amount of quality quarterbacks playing professional football. Like you yeah. look at the at the NFL, there's maybe fifteen like studs. And then there's 20 that are, eh, right? Like, and then there's probably four that are like, well, not a chance. So you can't afford to try to be one of the top teams and leagues in the world and attract fans with this high scoring, all this stuff, if you don't have a quarterback. So you yeah. got to protect your quarterback. And that, and I don't just mean your offensive lineman. I mean the league. you got to protect yeah. your quarterbacks. That's yeah. the way I and look I, at it. And I agree with you. The Player Association will, will defend it, but I think that – they're not going to. They're not going in the back door. They're not going to defend it as well as they. No, I hope they, not. they should. I think that you know what you're going to take this lump, and you're lucky you didn't get more. Yeah, it just, it's just a, it's a stain. It's a stain on what's going on, and um, you know, it, it's we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. At the end of the day, it's the first step. I think I know it'll get challenged, um, but the league has to. Keep in high regard, high standing, and uh, there's got to be positivity, right? Yeah, got to be positive. I, I, that reminds me of a. I think we were in Montreal, and I don't know if I got, I was hurt. I forget what I, I didn't get kicked out of games. So I never got kicked out of a game for hip, but I think I just I was hurt. And I was in the room, and I'll never forget. I think it was, it was a defensive end for Montreal uh, slack, not slack. Uh, Sweet crazy. Birch. No, oh, uh, the other one. Swiggy. Uh, Swiggy. Swag, swag, yeah. uh, swag. Swag. He, uh, he had Payton. a thing with Alfred Seth. Was it Alfred Payton? Was Seth, yeah. was Seth Dittman? Yes. I think it was Seth. The nicest and guy in the world. Nicest guy yeah. in the world. He actually, they both got kicked out of the game. I'm in the room already. I think my shoulder's done I or something. I think you had your, your arm or something. One of those yeah, years it was, where it was, yeah. All, it was yeah. all buggered up. So I'm in there, and all of a sudden um, – he comes running into our room, and Seth is like looking at him, and this guy attacks him in our room because the benches are right beside each other. I remember we all ran in, right? You ran out of no, the locker room. Nope, nobody, nobody heard it because I ran out because I couldn't do anything because my shoulder, and I'm yelling, and you know how Montreal plays all the music, the yeah. uh, the loud music as it was in. Nobody saw him go in. I'm yelling, guys, guys! I'm screaming. Nobody's hearing me. And you can't uh, help. He's guy can't help Seth six foot seven you know three hundred pound guys getting killed <laughs> inside and he didn't they didn't even get any games not even I a game know. they got nothing oh my god there was That's times funny. when uh, Adriano I think when he was playing for uh, Toronto like literally walked into he might even play for us at the time I can't remember walked into the Montreal locker room before the game and challenged yeah. the whole team yeah, and he yeah. should have got killed in the locker room can you imagine. Yeah. And then him sticking his fingers in guys' oh, butts in the huddle. Oh, in the huddle, he used boots. to do that. What a beast! Huh? I said, to, I said to him, I go, because he's. You got a picture. Adrian Belly's fingers are like one oh, finger is like a sausage. sausage. Yeah. And he said he'd get in this scrum and he would grab anything and <laughs> just anything, ass, ball, anything, <laughs> finger in the culo. He would do it, and guys would be jumping up. He would, they wouldn't know who did it. He guys were screaming, and he's just screaming. saying, "Not me, not me!" Oh, what an God. animal! And then we get him on the show, right? <laughs> yeah, we get him on the exactly. podcast. What, like a year ago? And he's like prim and proper. Oh, doesn't yeah. say nothing. He's in his office. Well, wow, come on. He's lucky well, the refs didn't smell his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Butko, oh. how we doing? We got our special uh, guest or guest? Oh, we do. Oh, oh okay. Okay, so here's here's the setup. You know, we've been going now what four weeks in a row, I think. Yeah. We've had uh, 
started with uh, Wood with Darren Flutie. We had Danny Mack. We had uh, our Joe friend Mufford. Joe Mufford. And, and the latest was uh, Jimmy, Dave Hack. Yes. So today marks, I guess, the fifth guest in a row on this show. So I guess with, the, with David, without further ado, and uh, again, to preface this, Rob and I have no idea who this is going to be. Let's no. hope it's good, okay? Let's yeah. hope this is worthy of joining the cast of characters that come on before. So without further ado, David, let's introduce the guest. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. Okay, oh. Rob, please introduce this gentleman. I can't oh, oh my uh, God. For, <laughs> Calvin, for, for, the, for, our, for lots of our fans on our podcast, I'm going to introduce one of the hardest oh. hitting, nicest, Gentleman, best football player I've ever played with, Calvin Tiggle, middle oh. linebacker for the Cats. I love you, wow. man. I haven't seen you forever. How are you? Man, I love y'all too, man. Thanks for the invite. I know it's a surprise to y'all. When I wow. heard that it can, you know, <clears throat> I can surprise y'all, I say, oh my God, one of my two favorite guys, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Oh, this oh, is man. awesome. That's so, Tiggs, the last time we saw Tiggs, was at our 99 reunion and he came in late and i'll never forget when you walked into that room it was like a standing ovation we we, we were so excited <laughs> we were so excited to see you man and i'm excited to see you today this is awesome oh man and you know what what you just um comment on it was the same for me when i saw all, all of y'all it just brought back so many memories i had tears forming up in my eyes i'm like wait a minute wait a minute i can't i can't be showing my tears now <laughs> It was great seeing everyone, man, and man, yeah. I just congratulations again, Hitchcock. Most definitely, well deserved. Oh, mm-hmm. Thanks, Cal. I mean, uh, uh, for those again, Calvin Tiggle, we're gonna we call you Tiggs. We're gonna call you Tiggs through the show, yeah. but um, we have to kind of say your name a few times because people <laughs> people want to know who they're talking to. Uh, Cal, I mean, you know, I saw you in '99 as well. It, my, the, just the the hair on my arms stood up when I when I saw you walk in, and because we haven't seen you since really two. 2000 and or 99 maybe 2000 2001 i think was the kind of the Crazy. last time i think yes I like, that was a long long ass time yes it was it was i mean just and then you know to see all of y'all together and again and like i say it just brought back so many memories and fun times but you know we went through some hard times but yet yeah. we prevailed and stayed together and it turned out to be good times. So that that right there was a, is a memory we'll never forget. Man, so so Tiggs, I, I mean, like I got the pleasure of playing with you in Toronto first, right? Yes. Like we got to play in Toronto. There was some, we had some crazy times in Toronto that first year. I was there. I was like, we had like uh, one guy punching out the, the window of the uh, the coach's uh, car. We were sending yes. guys to the border. Uh, you know, you, you, the one thing we won't that, say we won't say what Calvin did. Well, no, no. All I know, all I know, is that if you had Calvin Tiggle on your team, you didn't worry too much about nothing. That's nothing. It. On, on the field, field or off the field, doesn't uh, matter. You didn't worry too much. And that's that's, uh, the, and that's the beauty of sports. And I tell the youth today. I mean, you to me, sports get you ready for life. I mean, because it's teamwork, trusting one another, and working together for a common goal. So that was a blessing in disguise what we went through, especially yeah. with you, Mike, in Toronto, in my first year experience up in Canada. You know, I have to say, I love Canada because y'all welcomed me with open arms, and it was a journey from that point on. Yeah. Well, well yeah. listen, Takes, while we get into a little background, so where are you right now? Where, where's home for you now? So I live in Maryland, um, the eastern shore. I'm like an hour and forty minutes from Ocean City. Okay, nice. okay. And you and you came when you first came up here. You're Maryland born, right? You're in that Washington D.C. Maryland area, right? Uh, yes, I was born. I was raised in Fort Washington, Maryland. Yes. Uh, and, and, and and Tiggs played at Georgia Tech. Is my right? Yes. Where'd you play? Yes. 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 So I like for for a young guy like me coming in, and you know playing U sports or CIS football, whatever the heck it was at that time. We didn't have linebackers <laughs> in university <laughs> like Calvin Tiggle. So when I when I saw Calvin and his ability, and Rob, you'll appreciate it you watch this like daily, his ability, your ability, Tiggs, to attack people at the line of scrimmage and submarine them, like, where did that come from, man? That was, like, crazy. Oh, my face. 
at Boys Club. Um, I was, you know, especially the neighborhood because, you know, we used to throw, we used to play throw up tackle like all the time. And for some reason, I always used to play with the older guys. The older guys used to have me out there with them. They used to knock me down, make me get up. And I thank them to the day because they made me who I am. Um, just yeah. to, you know, don't be scared, you know, go for it. And then and for me to had the advantage with the bigger guys, I know I had to make the impact first. Right. And that's where it all started from. Mm-hmm. Nah, that was incredible. I mean, Rob, you talk, talk a little bit about Tiggs from a defensive point of view, like what he meant to you in your position. Well, I think for me being a safety and being right behind Tiggs, <laughs> it allowed me to be a better player as well because I, I just watched the way he shot the gaps. And, and, and believe me, it's it, it's he's an unbelievable player like it's one of the best hardest hitters i've ever ever seen besides myself no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, but, I, but hey Tiggs, you, you do have to you do have to give some props to you know the mike campbells and the mike philbricks and the guys that would sacrifice grabbing the center in the guard and and, and philbrick basically holding the two and then Tiggs would have that little tiny gap and he'd shoot through and he'd just nail guys and that was one of one of the greatest things that as a, as a young player as well coming up and watching and having a, a guy like that in front of me playing the game and just watching how he shoots the gaps, watching how he reads the plays, watching his drops. It made my job a lot easier because I knew that if he was going to one side, I didn't even have to run to make the tackle because the tackle was already done. <laughs> it was already finished on that side. So. <laughs> Uh, Tiggs, it was a, it was just a, a, a pleasure and an honor to, to play with you and and against you. I played against yeah. you as well. Which, <laughs> thank God you weren't on special teams <laughs> on the, when I was. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was it, it was special, pal. Oh man, thank you. And you know what you alluded to earlier as far as the defense alignment, you know, and Mike <clears throat> Morielli spoke on this. You know, with Mike Campbell and those guys, I started at um, Toronto first. And it started from there, and they, like you say, they sacrificed themselves, and that what made it so special that they didn't worry about making up the, the play. They wanted to make sure I was free, and it yeah. extended from Toronto on to Hamilton. And when they designed the plays for me to roam freely, and to this day, every time when I do a speech or who, whoever, I thank them. Um, you know, for all, you know the accolades that I have accomplished, I, I wouldn't have, have accomplished them without them doing what they did. So oh, big ups like to the Phil Bricks and the Campbells and the rest of the D line that helped me to accomplish what I did. I, I, that's all, and I also think uh, a, a big a big part of that was uh, Coach Sudsy telling those two that you better grab that and, get, and have kids <laughs> free of us. You're gonna be buying lunch. <laughs> Hey, Coach Suds, yeah, God rest him. Yes, most definitely. Coach Suds was an unbelievable coach, and the way he had us, you know, get prepared for the opposition, it was just like I learned a lot from that. And from what I learned from that, I, I take it until today of my job, what I do now is preparation is the key. You know, we all, all of us was good, you know, um, but for us to have the advantage, we have to know what you're going to do before you do it first, and, yeah. and that helped tremendously. And and with and then uh, with Mike and them, sometimes they will collaborate with Suds and say, okay, if we do this, then he'll be free to do that. And Suds, you know, and then it was working hand in hand. We worked well together, and so that's yeah. and I think that's why we was one of the best defense Hamilton Tiger has ever seen. Yeah. Because of the collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the best teams, right? Like in terms of, and that's what I was going to get into now. So you come from Georgia Tech, you head to Toronto, your first introduction in the CFL. You got some characters in Toronto. And then we say <laughs> some of those characters moved down to Hamilton and, and joined some more characters. So <laughs> yeah. what was it like for you to be, you know, coming out of Georgia Tech, you know, a, a big time football player, come to the CFL, get used to it, but also get used to just how we were in the locker room. Cause it was, I'm assuming it was different than most of the teams that you played on. Like we were having a lot of fun. Yes, we, we did. And, and you're absolutely right. It was, it, I seen with us to me in America, nothing against the American ball, 
it was we also had fun but it was more so like a, a business right. and the difference what i saw coming you know up in canada we was like a family i mean mm -hmm. we they you know the linemen would have get togethers and invite the linebackers the db safeties it was like we, we was all together and we party together yep. it wasn't like nobody had their like set groups or anything and then as far as the offense the guys used to come and join us and vice versa if Danny McManus have us you know have a song we all collaborate together and it was just it was a wonderful feeling to be like outside of football um we looked at each other as family yeah, yeah. as people as yeah. people yeah yeah so so Calvin Tiggle is our is our guest to for those that are just tuning in to our lovely podcast. Uh, again, again, I have to do state this one of the, the greatest and hardest hitting metal linebackers I've ever played with. And, uh, you know, takes we're just talking about that, you know, those little get togethers. And remember, we used to sit in Brian Timmons field there when we used to get a case of beer after rundown and just sit there. And, and I think when people hear this now, one, it's like, one case of beer. No, there was no, okay, multiple so, cases of beer. Well, we first of all we used to get the rookies to go get the cases of beer. And this is after like the the day after a game, and to, for the for the for the the players that are probably listening to this now, uh, whoever listens to this now, it would be unheard of that you know twenty five thirty guys would be sitting in the bleachers with three or four cases of beer, having a couple beers, and just collaborating and talking about the game, having a good time. Whether we lost or we won, we still did it, and I think that. In my opinion, and you guys will agree with me, that's who made us. That was our identity. That's who made us who we were, and that's how we won those games in ninety eight, ninety nine. And that's my opinion on it. Absolutely. And remember training camp, though. Remember training. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting, watch film, then after film, we got a keg, keg, a keg, a keg of beer, and we. Some guys didn't even shower; they just raced to the room to get a cold beer in them after. Yes. Oh man. Yes. Oh man, that, that was that was some great, wonderful times. Oh yes. Well, M Mike and I say now that uh, I think that the guys are are doing protein shakes and, oh, and riding, yeah. the, riding the bike and stretching after games and getting the ART and, and, and ultrasound and we, we were showering getting ready to go to the bar after <laughs> just because we, <laughs> we, we we learned for listen our, our, our starting quarterback uh, who is now going on to the wall of fame in, in Hamilton Pigs that Danny used to he was the leader he used to ice from the inside like he just as many beers he can get in him and and people would think, man, a keg at camp, like in between two a days and after the second practice and before meetings and guys. Are, but man, that was where we got yeah. to know everybody. And, yeah. and that's that's what that's what Sudsy that's what Sudsy basically said to us is that this is a way where the and this veterans only, and just to, to you know give a little bit of a background on it, it was veterans only, and we were, we invited one or two rookies to come, and they'd have to dress up in their uh, in their khaki pants and a white shirt, whatever they had on, and they had to serve the veterans, and that's how we that's how we allowed the rookies to come in and get to know the veterans, and I thought it was brilliant by by Coach Suds and the staff just to. You know, to have that to have that room for an hour or two before our meetings, uh, to get to know those guys. Because you know, Tiggs, and you know when you came up here and you tried out for these teams in, in Toronto, you know, there's not a lot of you got to make some plays in in those limited plays that you're going to get in training camp. And if you don't make the plays, you're gone. And this is another way, just that. You know, Sudzy would ask us questions. I remember him coming up and saying, "Hey, how was that? Uh, how was that one rookie? How's that?" Uh, I don't know whatever his name was. How was that kid? And I'm like, you know, he's fitting in really well with the guys. The veterans like him. And okay, good. And that's that's part of not just being a football player, but that's part of being fitting in the team. And that's that's why we gelled. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then in, in, in training camp, also like when we had dinner, um, we would have a little, you know, have, maybe have a rookie to do something or yeah. that was sing. sing or whatever. <laughs> it was right, and it was nothing against anyone it was just fun times and the rookie had you know i saw the rookies they had a great time doing it as well because yeah. they were more comfortable fit in and it, it was just building to me it was a building a true you know a true family you know? that, that's yeah. what it was i mean in the, even the beer room rob talks about having the, the rookie service it was like for one time they served us once and then they joined it and then they yes. could be part of that 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 group and then the next group and then the rookies talk and they're like hey i want i want to be the next one to, to serve yeah. you guys beer i want to i want to get into that room and and we were selective right because you yeah. you kind of get a read on people early and you and 
and not just as football players, but how they fit in to Rob's point. And, and that's what Sudsy was great at. That's what uh, Ron was great at, just keeping the team together. We talked about it all the time. We talked about it with Joe and, and with, with uh, uh, Dave and, and all those guys. We're just saying, like Ron would say, this is the same group of guys. Today, I want to see them at the end of the season, same group of guys. And that's unheard of in pro sports, right? Because it's all about what have you done for me lately. But, right. you know, it, it was a chance to bring us all together. I still am upset, and I, and you probably feel this way too, and I know Rob does that. Man, we could have had a dynasty. Like, we could have went 2000, 2001, 2000, and we just we lost guys over thousands of dollars. And not not to their, not because they, uh, their fault, but management at that time for us was, was lean. It was lean. There wasn't a lot of extras going around. Right. No. Right. Right. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, when I left that first year and I came back and y'all was in the playoffs, it was like, I came down on that side and I was like, I'm still part of y'all. You know, I was cheering y'all, jumping <laughs> up and down. Like, come on, come on, come on. You know, I was like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be in there. And I had to step back. Like, oh, I'm an organized now again. And, and just coming back on that field and, and the people just clap. You know, and I was like, "Wow!" It just, yeah. it was hard. Not, nothing like the, nothing like uh, the Tie Cat fans. That's for sure. They, I, they sure loved you. They still got some Tiggle, Calvin Tiggle jerseys in there in the stands. And I see that you've uh, haven't got your finger fixed yet, eh? Oh yeah, I saw no, that. No. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's, he, for those who can't see, uh, his pinky finger on his uh, right hand is completely bent, and yeah, he can hold the golf club. That's about it. <laughs> so, Tiggs, Calvin, Tiggs, what, what are you, uh, what are you up to these days? So, <clears throat> I work with Parks and Rec, which entails that we have, you know, create programs from the Pee Wees up to the senior citizens. So um, now I'm a regional manager, which I oversee um, Lake Arbor, Glen Arden, Palmer Park, which is which are community centers in the communities that spreads um, a great deal over the territories in Maryland, Prince George's County. And um, so I still have an impact in the youth lives, and that's what's most important. And then, like what I was saying earlier, what I have learned from you all, from the sports. Um, era and just um, I give back, sharing with them, and so yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. Awesome. Well, that's that's perfect. That that's right up your alley, Cakes. I, I'm sure those kids look up to you, and I mean you're so, you're a soft spoken guy, but that yeah. wasn't that wasn't like what it was I, like I, on the field. I, don't, don't, no. get, don't get twisted. That's not no. what things. I, I, I was just I was just about to say for those listening right now, saying okay, this guy is one of the hardest hitting guys. If, if they don't know him, they're just tuning in, and they're like, yeah, he's got a, he's kind of a soft spoken guy. Yeah, you, you don't even want to you don't want to no. put pads on him because it's it's like a light switch. You click it and you click it off and on and you get what you get <laughs> and, and, and ron knew that too right ron knew i'll never forget that in vancouver 1999 gray cup he he, he gave you the floor right yeah. before we went on that field i'll never forget it oh, and shit. no one will forget it and tiggs i'm, I'm not blowing smoke man the, to to a man every guy on that team worshiped what you had to say like we just that that moment where because you didn't say a lot but when, when you did i mean you certainly said a lot on the field with your play but when you said that and, and, and let's face it we knew we were going to win that game two weeks mm -hmm. previous to that but when yeah. you said that that was like okay let's get it going it's, it's and, and we did and we, and, and we defensively did. i mean damn uh, you guys <laughs> made you know i know we scored some points but yeah. you made it very easy to do so that was fun times Oh, that you, you know what? Uh, you know what? Brought, when you brought that back in my memory, I, first thing I think about is was it Mike Cummins. Was it, what's that? His name? Jeff Cummins. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Cummins. Jeff, Jeff Cummins. Yeah. Jeff Cummins. Yeah. Jeff said, "I got something to say. I got something to say." <laughs> we was like, "Go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead." Jeff said, "This piece, everybody's quiet." And I said, "All right, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> Just let it, don't even let him talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was my love, Jeff. Jeff was a clown. <laughs> yeah, we were, he was. He's up at Acadia now. He's the head coach here at the East Coast. I just talked to him the other day, as a matter of fact. So he, he's doing good. He's been up there 20 years, about. That's what he said. 20 years he's been a head coach. Yeah. Where, yeah. For, where, where at? 
So on the East Coast, so like in uh, Nova Scotia, have a place called Acadia University. So he's been head coach in there. He's been there for about 20. He's been head coach in about 15 or, or more. Yeah, at least, um, yeah. Yeah, so, he's doing, so that leads me to a good question. So who, who are you chatting with now, Tiggs, the guys that, that we would know that uh, we played with? Like anybody you still keep in touch with? I got to think that you and Joe still connect and hang yes. out. I'm probably, Joe is probably who, who got you hooked on to come on this podcast, if I had to guess. No, nah, not at all. No. No. no, no, it was so our producers are doing their job. Wow, <laughs> yes. wow, and, 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 the, and he got in contact. Actually, he got in contact with my son, and really? he thought he was talking to me. And my son said, "No, you must be talking about my father." And wow. uh, so that's how you know he connected us. And yes, he said, "Oh, this is gonna be a surprise for Mike and his guy." I said, "Most that's definitely, awesome. yeah. <laughs> just let me know. I'm on, you know." But as far you know, who um. Yes, I talked to Joe, um, but it, Joe Hagen, sometimes we reach oh. out to each other. Yes. Yeah. Listen, let, yes. Can, can we talk a bit about Joe Hagen's cause, because oh. I, I think he was one of the best football players I've ever played with. Like, yeah. he could have played any position. And, yes. and and we know what happened. To, and for the for those of you who don't know what happened to Joe, uh, well, we're talking to Calvin Tickle here. Um, Joe was uh, a linebacker that could have played receiver, that could have played DB, that could have played any kick returns. And went down on one kick return and just blew out his shoulder, and it just never, never came back. And right. but he, I've kick never off. kick off. I've never yeah. heard him complain. No, right. I've never heard him complain. Remember, and remember that unbelievable play against Montreal? Mm-hmm. That helped us get to, get to that great cup. Yes. Listen, yes. He, no, ninety-nine. That was, 99, was going right? in. That was the ninety-nine East final, and yeah. I, I'm not sure that that play call was sound. But when you have a guy like Joe Hagens go up and get it, yeah, uh, I mean, over, over, over two All Star oh, DBs, yeah, went over and caught that. Yeah, that was termination right there. Incredible, mm. incredible. Right. So, so what's uh, so Joe was was uh, coaching at one point in time. Is he still doing some coaching? Um, I know he at one time was he living in Montreal. I want to say where well, he wasn't living in. Um, he was in Guelph, I think, helping for a while, or Waterloo, doing some university coaching. But I, I, I haven't seen him since we got together. I haven't seen anybody since we got together for that, that 99 uh, reunion. So uh, when you're oh, talking you to go. him. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Joe would, like, on my birthdays, Joe would text me, happy birthday, and stuff like that. I, we really didn't in, um, get in depth of what each other right. are doing. But we just, like, he had keep up and just, you know, Happy Father's Day, Happy Birthday. I was like, hey, Joe, what's going on? Yeah. You know, that was bad. Um, but other than that, Mike, that, um, Joe, both Joes, and I might, I know Joe would hook us up, and we might be on the three-way with Archie once in the oh, blue. Oh, that's yeah. my boy, Arch. I love Arch. Yeah. I love Arch. <laughs> just so about Archie, just... You know, that that was my guy that uh, he just loved to play the game. Yes. He just loved to yeah. play the game, and he was tough, yeah. and yeah. he was a character. And yes. I just I just loved him. I mean, we had so many guys, and, and I can't narrow it down because we just had at every position, at every position we had, if not every guy, the majority of the guys were, I would say everybody. We just, they were the right people. Yes, it was. Right. And he, you like, he had that humor that put a smile on your face. Oh, I could, yeah. I just remember us going back to the Grey Cup the second time, and we landed in the airport, and our, they, you know, the cameraman came in. Archie was like, "We're back!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of like uh, Brady and Gronk when they were doing that, right? We're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh, man. Let's, so tell tell us a little about your family. You mentioned your son, uh, and why don't you let us know what's going on with you on, on the personal side? Oh, man, you know what? Well, so my kids are grown. And Calvin, my oldest, the one that your producer got in contact with, man, he's doing great. He's in Georgia, got a family. Got well, I'm, I got I have five grandkids. We are a grandfather? I'm a what? Grandfather. How old is he? Oh, man, he just, well, he was born. So he's two years old. His name is Cassius. Yeah. And he's got five kids now. No, 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 no,
strong, strong swimmers. Strong yeah, swimmers. Yeah. <laughs> and my second son, Najee, he he has uh, four kids, and he wow. lives in Gaines. They live in Gainesville, Florida. And then my uh, uh, two kids up in Canada. So far, my daughter and my son, Kevin. And they doing well. So far, I just graduated from college last year. And, wow. Uh, so, and she, they still living in Bradford. So, yeah, yeah. they doing very well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Did, did any of them follow in your footsteps? Anybody want to play sports, want to play football? Well, my oldest played at Kent State. And, okay. Um, yes. And, and he was, he, matter of fact, his cock, he was in, he played your position. Really? And, uh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. You know, no, no. He did. He was he was doing very well, but he always had uh, ankle problems, and that's what deterred him. But he got his master's in wow. um, some type of pharmaceutical. I can't think of the right terminology. And um, yeah. so he right now he sells pills to doctors. Doctors call on him. Yeah, he's doing he's him. doing fabulous. Yes, mm-hmm. that's amazing. So, isn't it? Isn't it amazing that the the sport of football, the connections you make, the places you go. Um, the experiences you have, and and then like how much how much do your children remember of your time? Because let's face it, we're all old, and there's not a lot of game tape on YouTube. Put it that way, right? right. <laughs> Actually, not really. Probably none at all. You know, yep. um, I, I I have to share this, but my daughter, you know, she was playing hockey in Bradford uh, coming really? up, and what crushed me when I heard her jersey number was 73. I was like, oh. oh. That's <laughs> awesome. People yeah. in the back, it was 73. Yeah. I, I was, that right there crushed me. That right there crushed me when I got the phone call and said, yeah. so far I'm playing hockey and she wearing number 73. I'm like, what? Ooh, oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah. There's, 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 there's not a lot of hockey players wearing 73. <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> That's why it's unique. <laughs> yeah, hey, Six, how the heck did you get the number 73? Was that a college number, too? No, my college number uh, through in America was 58. High school, uh, Georgia Tech, Madif- and Tampa. I was number 58. Yeah. When I came to Canada, I wanted to change a lot. And okay. to me, so I want to get biblical, but 73 to me, represent God, the number seven okay. and the number three. So it, it became more of a spiritual number. Hmm. And like you said, like his car said, it was unique. You never heard no linebacker wearing 73. No. So, yeah, I just... I just good. Well, it worked. It worked. Yeah, I, I, I like that. <laughs> mine's, mine's a bit of a unique story, too, but it's not the biblical side. I wore 24 in high school and 24 in, uh, in university, but when I came up here, 24 was taken by a running back. So I took 42 because it was a backwards case of beer. 24, 42. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, I don't know if any of you, Hitch, may remember my first number in Toronto. I wore 18 my whole high school career, college career. I got to Toronto and they handed me a jersey, number 78. I'm like, Ooh, yeah. that doesn't look good, but I'll take whatever you got. Give me whatever you got. I don't care what number I am. I just want a chance to play ball. That's I remember it. 78. Yeah. Me, 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 me too, 18, was that Masadi number? 88. 88 was my yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Paige, what was your what was your first year? You were, were you 94, 93? What what year were you was your not, first year up here? 94. 4, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Toronto and then 95 with us. No. No, no, 95 no, 90, still in Toronto. Yeah. Toronto, that's right. Yep. Okay. Mhm. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeez. Oh, we mm-hmm. had uh, yeah, we had some we had some characters in Toronto, man. We I, I you had a couple lean years, Tiggs, going from Toronto. We had a couple lean years there, and then we first got to Hamilton '97. Or that was did you know you were gone in '96 to Hamilton? No, yeah, or '97. Because I did two years with Toronto, four years with Hamilton, and then two more. That's right. Two back, two yeah. years in Toronto. You, you and I are too different. I went two, five, two, and then back again for two. So I I went yeah. up and down the the QE, and they didn't like me too much in Hamilton when I played for Toronto. But they seemed to like you not. It pretty well. <laughs> Not so much me. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- we, I, I heard some booze, but I heard a lot of claps at the same yeah, time. Have you, uh, have you been following at all a little bit 
you know, I know that the games are on down there now in the states. I know they play them on. I on. I think they're on Florida ESPN, Sports Network. ESPN, or ESPN something, yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I don't know if you watched the the Toronto game the other day. Diggs, they're playing at BMO Field now. They're no longer at the Rogers Center or the Sky Dome, and uh, so they've been playing at the BMO Center where the soccer guys play. The, um, and they've got. I think it holds about twenty, twenty-two thousand or twenty-three thousand there, maybe a little less. But I tell you, it's embarrassing, Callan, that. I bet you on the one side there is 2,000 people on the one stands, and the other side maybe five. I bet you they had 7,000 people. Wow. It, it yeah. was it's just embarrassing for the city, embarrassing for the team, embarrassing to as TSN watching this game. That's uh, hard. they gotta, they got to switch the cameras and put them on the bench side or the other side to show that at least that there's some people on behind the bench because that, that other side, I looked, I thought it was like two hours before the game. It was game time, and the National Anthem just finished, and there was 1, 1,500 people on that side. It was awful. Yeah. What, what made them switch to that field? They, they had to or something? Yeah, I think it, the Rogers Center got bought by the guys that own the Blue Jays, and they basically said, we don't want football here anymore. We're going to turn this into a baseball stadium. They moved to BMO Field. The, the field is actually quite nice. It's in a perfect part of town. It's right off the – um, Make sure. you know, yeah, but it's right off the uh, go train, so you can take the transit in there. It just, for whatever reason, it's just never been able to take foothold there. But you come to go down the highway to Hamilton, and that place is packed all day long. And, yeah. you know, that, I guess that was your first taste, right, of seeing that new field when you rolled yes. in there a couple of years ago. What, what was your first impression? I was like, amazing to compare <laughs> to what I'm used to playing, you know, like, I, I was like impressed, like, wow, Hamilton has stepped it up tremendously. <laughs> yeah. Man, that was really, that was, oh, that, that stadium is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They need to do something, yeah, they got to do something for Toronto like that, because I look at Toronto as you might look at like the New York Knicks of NBA yeah. and stuff. It's the major marketing, you know, piece for yep. that, you know, pro uh, sport. And they, yeah, something got to change. Something got to change. They, Toronto, Toronto's always wanted an NFL team, right? They've got the, they've got the Jays. They've got the Leafs. They've, they've, they, they, they've yeah, the been Raptors. asking for an NFL. They got the Raptors. Like it's, it's, it's a big league, and I'm, I'm surprised. Like a bunch of years ago, before they opened up. Uh, the Tim Hortons field, I think there was talk about moving a Hamilton and Toronto opening a, or building a stadium in Oakville. That was the kind of the talk like 10 years ago before this opened up uh, to have a, a dual stadium where, and I'm like, that's not going to work for Hamilton fans. Absolutely oh, not. Cause they're not going to drive to Oakville. Like they can't, they can't walk home from there. Right. <laughs> how, let me ask you this. How, so Hamilton, what's the record now? Oh, and four. Not good. Hey, 0 and 4 Teagues, and they're one game away from first place because Toronto's 1 and 2, and Ottawa's 0 and 4. The East is not doing very well right now, but they're one game out of first. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. They, they, got a, they got a good squad, though, Tiggs. They got a good squad. They just they're finding ways to lose. Right. You know what I mean? Instead of finding ways to win. So right. it's it, it'll come around, and you know they they've had a lot of success there and great ownership. Um, but it, it, but but it's funny because you you said something and we, I felt the same way. I know Hitch did. We walked into the new Tim Hortons Field, not the old Ivor Wind, and it's got everything you could imagine. But when we walked into our locker room, it felt That's like funny. home, and we had nothing. We had <laughs> nothing. we had plywood lockers, we had drips coming, we had a couple rats running through, we had no, it just. But it felt like home, and we didn't care. We didn't care. No, nope. we didn't care. Nope. I think it, it that's it was meant to like that look that atmosphere made it like a coal miner's yep. place and, and we went out there on that field that's how we carried car- car- and played like yeah oh like, we, didn't know, we didn't know any better <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> but you know we we didn't you know we traveled and yes we went into like BC. Uh, stadium and their locker room and you know it was nice and luxurious and but it wasn't us it wasn't yeah, us. It, it wasn't us it was it yeah. was not nah, we we want that grind gritty that give it to us you know yes you know that's why I mean, we you was, look listen look at the field we played on that field was like playing on cement uh yes. you know the paint painted lines were like painted with lead paint we had uh, duck crap and goose shit all over the field we didn't care yes didn't stop yeah. us from jumping, hitting the ground and scratching our arms and knees. And it was just, 
It, was, it, was it. Sure, it sure <laughs> felt like home when we went to Winnipeg and Saskatchewan at that time because they had some horrible visiting locker rooms as well. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> having said that, Tiggs, you got to see, while well, the Winnipeg's not new anymore, it's been open for a bunch of years now, their new stadium. And Saskatchewan's got a brand new stadium, and wow. they are – they're off the charts. They are, they are really, really nice. you got to Google them and take a peek at them if you haven't seen them. But there's some beautiful stadiums out there right now. I have to do that. I, I did not yeah. know that. Wow. Oh, yeah. If you walked into, especially uh, Saskatchewan in Regina, you walked into that stadium, and you think you're in the NFL stadium. Beautiful. Yeah. Really? Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, we got to get takes. We got to get O'Shea to, you know, Ocean Kyle Walters is the GM and uh, the head coach for Winnipeg. So we got to get them to fly us out to a game in Winnipeg. Hey, right? we should we should hook them. We should get that to get that done. Oh, please coerce them into doing that. I would, I would love to come. I would love to. I would love to come. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work we're gonna on work that. On it. Let, let's it. take. I, I just wanna. Uh, we could talk forever. This is like this is a thrill. If you would have seen our faces, I hope you did at the beginning when you came on. I mean, this, that yeah. was that yeah. was a moment. So, so yeah, I, wa- so I want yeah, to I thank you for that. I, yeah, I didn't know I was coming on. We had no idea. No idea. No idea. We knew we had. They, a don't, they don't tell us, Tiggs. I swear to swear to God, they did yeah. not tell us. They don't tell us on anybody that they're bringing in a special guest. So, oh, okay, cool. That's nice. I like. They, they told me you didn't know, but I thought after. By the time I'm trying to hook up, trying to get in and stuff, nope. then you see the name. You still didn't nope. see. They wow. keep you on that. There's like a back end, so we don't see you until they let you on. So we wow. have no idea who it is. So and and, uh, and before you before we like sign off, you do have to stay on for a couple of minutes or maybe a minute after because our uh, our producer needs to to keep you on just for another oh, minute or so after after we say goodbye. So okay. how's that one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, but why don't we do that, Robbie? Why? And I hate to do this because you know I feel like I just want to go down to the beer room with Tiggs right now and just hang out and keep keep the stories going. But yeah. we, lo- we love you. We love you, brother. It's great to see you, man. It's. Uh, it's a pleasure. Good luck to you and your family, and I hope to see you again soon and talk to you soon. God, we love you, man. And, uh, hey, again, such an honor for you to, to come on this uh, with us, and so nice to see your face, and uh, I miss you, pal. Love you, buddy. I love both. I love you all, too, and thank you all for having me, and I appreciate you all. Um, please have me again. You must yes, yep. we absolutely. Will. Yes, we will. We will. <laughs> Well, we're signing right, off here. Yeah, we're just going to sign off now. This is Mike Morielli. That's Rob Hitchcock and the incredible Calvin Tiggle on the Morielli and Hitch podcast here on the Ticat Audio Network. Talk to you soon. That's another episode of Morielli and Hitch on the Ticats Audio Network. Have a question or a comment for them? Email us at mnh at ticats.ca. That's M-A-N-D-H at ticats.ca.